What up, guys? Welcome to the podcast today. You will notice that the sound quality from my end is not as good as it usually is. Um, mm -hmm. Eugene and I had planned to record one in advance at back home, um, but we just got kind of busy doing some other stuff when we were when I was in the office, and so I'm recording one from Costa Rica. So um, if you guys don't know, a couple times a year I go down to Costa Rica and I teach some jiu-jitsu camps at the Hero Academy in Tamarindo. So should you be privy to enjoying a tropical vacation doing jiu-jitsu you can check out um hero bgj retreats and you can check out hero bgj academy tamarindo my next camp um is going to be in july of 2020 or no excuse me, may of 2024 so if you guys want to come down here and join me for a camp we'll be doing that um i may change it but as of right now i'm probably going to be going over some of my old man old grappler passing style and uh top position stuff basically how to make your opponent work really hard and you not have to work as hard. This is something I've been working on for about a year now. And uh, I'm really enjoying the style and it's great because I can roll with a lot of younger people, slow things down and uh, they get more tired than I do. And that's a, that's a good thing when you're, when you're working with a, uh, the, you know, a, the energy of a 38 year old versus like an energy of a 22 year old. <laughs> right. I'm, again, I'm still very spry, but you know, we all know that being 38 or 40 is a bit different than 20, right? It just yes. is what it is. Yeah. So, um, and if you're on my email list, then obviously uh, you, the Chukra list, uh, you'll get information. But anyway, thank you guys for being here. We're going to go over, um, we did this recently on a, a live podcast. We're going to go over uh, five lessons. You can think of these five life lessons from Jiu Jitsu. Uh, this is something I get asked a lot about, about kind of ideas that I've picked up from Jiu Jitsu that didn't, that didn't have carryover value to life off the mats, right? And pretty much everything. And so uh, we'll be talking about five things that I think are pretty universal to everything. And I'll sort of give you ideas of how they apply to my life, my business, um, relationships, everything else. And then you can kind of maybe think about how they apply to you. Because again, I don't think any of these are, what's the word? Groundbreaking. These are just really useful principles that I think you can apply to pretty much everything. Uh, big thanks to our sponsors for making this happen. Charles Webb, Charles Webb CBD. If you guys haven't checked them out, charlesweb.com is the website. Um, again, if you guys have never, I, I was just having a conversation with uh, a friend of mine about this. Like her, her father-in-law was using CBD to deal with a, some sort of issue. Again, you can't say it treats anything because it's not FDA regulated, mm -hmm. right? But they were using it to do something, right? And they were finding that they had a lot of positive benefits. And then they got a hold of some different CBD and they had like, they started getting hallucinations and stuff like oh, that. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so I was, I was talking to her about it. I was like, well, like this is something that, you know, it's kind of interesting because it is not FDA regulated means that people can put whatever they want to in those vials. And so whether or not you guys use CBD, it's important to make sure you use a quality product because they did a study, like this is a number of years ago, like three or four years ago. And it was like, 70% of the bottles in the, the products that they found had varying amounts of what were in them versus what was actually on the label. Um, and one of the cool things about Charles Webb's products is that they're third party tested. So whatever is in the bottle or in the label is what's inside the bottles, inside the gummy, inside the product that you're using. And if you guys want to check them out, you can use the promo code jujitsu 30 for 30% off the order. So again, charlesweb.com jujitsu 30 for 30% off. Also, if you guys want to get some solid jujitsu gear, uh, apparel, t-shirts, whatever you're looking for, go to epicworldbjj.com. My buddy Matt runs the website, uh, runs the company or started the company back in the day. He has a few uh, partners involved now, but it used to be just him. But he started it up as a jiu-jitsu black belt who is training and he makes products for people like you and me, jiu-jitsu grapplers. You know, he's on the mats rolling just like the rest of us. And again, you can go to his website, epicrollbjj.com. He has tons of cool stuff, t-shirts, rash guards, shorts, geese, the whole thing. A lot of times if you see me in a jiu-jitsu shirt in some of my videos on YouTube, if it's not one of my jiu-jitsu shirts, it's usually one of the Epic Roll shirts. And if you guys find something that you like on his website, you can use the promo code jujitsu 20 for 20% off the order at epicrollbjj.com. Also, if you guys want to support the podcast, check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash the Jiu Jitsu podcast. Upon joining, you'll get access to the exclusive library. You'll also get preferential treatment with uh, different requests for questions and things like that. So uh, Eugene monitors that. So if you are a Patreon member or you become a Patreon member, if you have a question you would like answered in the Patreon 
members area or even on the podcast, please just throw that out there in the uh, in that members area and we'll be happy to get to you. Um, and again, guys, uh, if you guys want to support the podcast that you listen to regularly, patreon.com slash the Jiu Jitsu podcast. And last but not least, guys, if you want to get access to my daily email that I send out, the Chu Crew email, you can do that by joining at my website, chujitsu.net slash join, J-O-I-N. When you join, you get access to a couple of free ebooks, and you'll get my daily email, which goes into everything from the books I'm reading, jujitsu ideas and training tips that I think are useful, uh, to philosophical ideas I'm chewing on, and to special offers that I have on different products, camps, and things like that that are coming up. A lot of that stuff never, ever gets past that. Like when I do my camps and things like that, I send out emails through the Chukuru list first, and usually almost all the spots get filled up. So I usually give it to them first because um, they're my uh, they're my, my loyal people, my my loyal Chu Crew members. So anyway, if you guys want to join, jujitsu.net slash join. And so with that said, guys, let's jump into it. So I said we were going to talk about five basic principles that you could use um, that are good for on the mat and also very useful off the mat. And these are things because yeah, let me go back a little bit. I've talked about before that as a person, I grew up on the mats, right? Like I became a grown man on the mats. I started jujitsu. Mm -hmm. I started grappling when I was what, 15 or something like that, 15, 16. And I started doing jujitsu when I was 18. And, you know, I've been doing it ever since. And so I've been on the mats in some way, shape or form since about 2000. And so it's like 24 years. And so I grew up on the mats. Long time. And so, yeah. Right. And, and what ends up happening is, is like, you know, someone will say, because again, we, we know that martial arts have kind of this transcendent ability to affect you in multiple places. I mean, most of you guys can attest to this by simply just judging how you feel after training, right? You're like, man, I feel so good. You know, so we know there's an effect to ourselves off the mats. And someone was asking me, like, you know, how has jujitsu affected me? And it's one of those things where there's a lot of lessons that I learned on the mats first. that I think you could have learned elsewhere. Yeah. But I grew up on the mats and I became an adult on the mats. So I learned it there. So um, hopefully these are entertaining to you. Maybe they're useful as well. So the first one, guys, is everything requi requires reps and practice. Like if you want to be good at something, if you want to be competent at something, you're going to have to put in your reps and practice. There's no sh short circuit or short uh, way to circumvent that process. Now, I know I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know. Everybody knows this, right? And if you don't like the word reps because you because you're one of those people that thinks drilling is useless, fine. Just think of like practicing and and when I say reps, I don't actually just mean reps of like drilling it. I mean reps of actually using it in live situations, trying to do something. Um, it, it's everything, right? So for this has been incredibly useful to me because when I got into jujitsu, excuse me, when I got into wrestling, first off, I sucked at wrestling in the beginning. I wasn't very good at it. Um, when I got into jujitsu, I wasn't all that good at it. I was not a natural, right? But in wrestling, I got into wrestling first. And over the course of, you know, the three years that I wrestled in high school, I got pretty good by my senior year. And I found that I got the best, had the most the most growth when I was really focused and was getting a lot of practice and imagine that. Right. And so when I got into jujitsu and wasn't very good at it, then I was willing to really focus on it and give it time because I knew it was going to take time. When I started doing videos uh, on YouTube, right. Which is how many of you guys came to know me. Like I had a video the other day, guys said, man, this is like, you're, you're, you speak really well. Well, it was a lot of reps. Um, I have some, I have some old videos that Eugene's seen and they're, they're like when I first started trying to do stuff, like I've always been good at speaking in front of people, but speaking in front of the camera is weird. And again, it wasn't very good. Right. Yep. And so again, it took a lot of practice. Um, even with the business, there's lots of like little things that we do with the business that require just reps, um, just getting practice, getting, getting experience and stuff, teaching jujitsu. If you're going to be a teacher in jujitsu, a lot of people have that aspiration being able to do something and then explain what you're doing in simple language at the same time, like on the fly, that's a skill. I don't think about it that much, but I think about like when I first started teaching, I struggled with teaching lots of ums and ahs as I'm trying to piece stuff together. But now I can talk about simply like I'm picking up the pin and you're going to hold the pin with your fingers just around the edge here. And then you, you can just talk about anything, right? Like right. teaching, it's, it's a skill that you learn where basically you're able to it sort of watch what you're doing and then explain how you're doing it. 
and put it into useful or easy language for someone to break down. That took a lot of practice, right? It yep. took a hell of a lot of practice. And so with anything that you guys get into, you've got to be willing to put the, 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 the time into it. And again, I think a lot of people understand this, but we live in a world where I think sometimes we have this FOMO thing going on where we're like, we're, we're afraid we're going to miss out on something or we're not getting better fast enough or mm. whatever nonsense is going on in our heads. And we want it faster, right? We want to circumvent it. If you look at like the sales ads that they, that a lot of times in jujitsu and really anything, it's all about fast progress, right? Yep. Um, it, the reality is, is that even the studies they've done, they've shown that like fast progress, it's all relative, of course, but fast progress really isn't the kind of stuff you want because it doesn't typically stick you yeah. know easy come easy go what what's hard what's hard fought and won usually sticks around and so again you've got to be willing to put that practice into it so whatever endeavor you decide to get into don't ever get into it thinking it's going to be easy right you get into it knowing that it's going to take a lot of practice just like when i'm trying to use a technique for like for the first time i know it's going to take possibly months or even longer um, when I started retooling up my game and to make it like a little bit slower and to sort of adapt it to being a little bit older, I remember I went for a, a couple months where I really wasn't able to pass anybody's guard like I used to be because I was using a different guard passing style mm -hmm. and going from all of a sudden like passing everybody's shredding through people's guards with all this movement and stuff to now I'm not passing anybody's guard. It's pretty tough, right? Like, again, it's, it can be a blow to the ego, but I went into it knowing that I got to get these reps during live situation rolling so that I can actually develop this technique. And it's going to be, a, it's going to take a while. I need the reps. Um, yeah. And so that's useful. What about you, Eugene? Like, is there something that you think of like in your life that was maybe particularly difficult that really all it was, was a, eventually was a situation where you just needed more reps and we need more time with it? Man, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think, you know, I was thinking about what you do really well, actually, to start when we first, when we were kind of sharing all this stuff. I think one thing that you do really well, I'll start there is like your storytelling. Like I think mm. the way you tell stories, like in your videos and even your emails, even through written, you know, uh, through written format, it's kind of tough. And that's something I've been working on. And occasionally I'll get a, I'll, my, I'll, I'll have my wife read my emails. So I write them about once a week and so yep. occasionally I'll hit a home run, <laughs> but not mm. terribly often. And I'm like, that's pretty good. You know, telling a story. I think that's something if I had to say something I'm working on is my email writing and just my writing in general. Mm -hmm. um, I think the more I do it, the better I get. I don't know as far as um, ooh, fit, like well, I think anything. the right writing makes your ability to present information better. I think yeah. for, at least for me, yeah. and I write every day, so it's yeah, like I, also like that's like one of those things where like it's a rep. Like I just go every day and I get some reps in, um, yeah. even if that writing never sees the light of day, I get reps in. Um, you yeah. know, it, it's just like training. Sometimes you train and, you know, it's it, the training is absolute garbage, right? Like you, you didn't do very well, whatever, but you train. Um, it's yeah. like a journal entry. Like I write in my journal pretty much every day. Sometimes I write in that journal and it's absolute just rubbish. I, I'm not going to use any of it. It's not useful. It's just yeah. random ideas. But then there's sometimes where I have some really profound thoughts or great ideas for training or a good video idea, whatever, something that's very useful yeah. to me or it gives me some insight into how I'm feeling right now about a particular thing. So, um, you know, again, you, it's like, we know that you, you just have to go into whatever you're doing, knowing it's, you're going to have, you're going to have to put in that effort. But well, I people I, make I, it, people make it look easy. Like when you do something, you do a video or you're showing a technique and you're like hitting it in tournaments. It's like, Oh, that's, instant people want instant gratification uh, everything is at our at our fingertips right instantly here's the hack well mm -hmm. in jujitsu yes some people progress faster than others but they're also like brandon for example uh who's a purple belt it's been trained what two three years how long has brandon been training about, three years about, yeah people don't realize like first of all brandon's a high level wrestler however in jujitsu he trains multiple times a day he studies he does mm -hmm. all these things like he's got and that's what he gets full time yeah. Yeah. And so time. think about how much, you know, I always say how much ground someone can cover in like that short period of time. Well, it's not that he's instantly getting better. It's that he's putting in hours and hours and hours. Some of that you see, some of that you don't. And um, I, I think that just everything's so at our fingertips. If I want to know what the hell uh, a question I want to know the answer to, I can just Google it on my phone real quick. I can figure it out right away. I don't have to go research it and do th it. Yeah. It just, I think when people see, someone's success they it looks like oh i could do that but they don't right. realize how much failure and also how many like 
practice runs like you talking about that video which still cracks me up uh, of yeah. you kind of doing this kind of like sales pitch it was well it was me it, well, it was me trying to do videos what is a sales pitch it was me doing videos <laughs> yeah. for the gym for okay. brand new okay. members i see um, i was just yeah. wearing a collared shirt yeah well i i just couldn't focus on it because it was really bad and yeah, i loved it. it it was hilarious but it's just like just to see that video and to see what you do now and like it's literally one take you know you're like one take on your videos like for me sometimes i'm i'm doing videos and i'm like i'm over here clapping my hands to reset <laughs> multiple times and um it, it's it's impressive and i know it didn't come with this very quick you know it, it took time man it's like hours lots of ambulances driving yeah. by the gym amber lamps you know well, lots it, of those it's it's just and, and it's it, impressive right? Well, and I think, and that, and, that's, and that's it. Like where you get into something, you just you know it's going to take those reps. Like I think sometimes the social media thing is dangerous because people see, like for instance, you'll see some short form content, or you'll see some guy saying, "Hey, look, all you got to do is this, whatever," um, and it looks so easy. It does, but it's yeah. deceptive, right? It's like, for instance, like when Jess and I ride horses. Okay, like again, I'm not a good horse rider. Like I'm, I'm okay. You know, I, I can ride a horse. I can get out there and lope and I can steer them around a little bit, but I'm not very good. The, our, the guy that coaches us, the guy that teaches us, Nathan, like when that dude's doing stuff, I mean, he looks so amazing and it looks effortless. Right. Um, but then I'm like, Hey, but then I'll talk to him. Hey, Nathan, how long have you been riding? Right. He's been riding since he was a kid. Uh, he's a full he's a full grown adult right but like when he's riding i mean he's barely using muscles and he just looks so smooth right. and so again but you just know that this is like this is the what you got to pay in with and so again I, I think it's it's a little at least here's what i hear here's i guess where maybe why this is so important why it's so important to understand this principle a lot of times people can look at what other people do and they can get that idea they can get that feeling of fomo or they can get that feeling that is really tough for humans where like we i want that too you know this is how i mean you look at the economy right like someone's driving some nice car i want the nice car yeah. you know it's like you, you get it you get the joneses right so we get the joneses not just with our stuff but also what we're doing right like oh man look at that i need that technique i can do that too or look at that guy making videos i can do that too well you probably can but can you do it for like a year or two or three and before it works and anybody gives a That's shit right. or can you practice a lot and the move doesn't work and you're getting smashed over and over again trying to make attempts at it only for to it eventually work in maybe a year from now, right? That's yeah. kind of the thing. So if you at least understand that going into it, then it becomes a little bit easier, right? Because like, this way you say, okay, well, this is what it's going to take, right? Like when I got thrown off the horse, uh, or thrown off a horse like this summer when I was riding, um, you know, we, me and Jess were at like a, a horse camp thing and I gave the horse the wrong command and he went crazy and like yeah. went, started going real fast. I lost control. And when I lost, like I fell off, I got up and I was like, you know, She's like checking on me. She's like, okay. I'm like, I'm fine. I'm like, I knew this was going to happen at some point, right? Like, sure. I, 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 I didn't think that I was going to be the one person that somehow became a good rider and never got thrown off the horse, right? So, um, you know, I think at least if you go into it with that idea that this is going to require a lot of practice, it's at least easier to understand when you get into it and it's very difficult. Right, right. When you struggle, and it's easier to kind of go through those struggles, I think, and that's that's part of the process. Yep. Uh, on number two, here's a big one that was important. This is this is important the better you get at stuff. Um, so I'll give you an example. Years ago, um, you know, it's, this is long. This is back in the day, like past. There was a period of time where, and it, it depends on the gym. Some gyms are still like this, but most gyms aren't. There was a period of time where like leg locks were just not practiced in jiu-jitsu for the most part, right? Nobody really did them. It wasn't a big deal. And um, it wasn't like you were you know, you, you were, you were doing something wrong because nobody did them. So nobody was getting caught in them. And uh, for the most part, and then there was this sort of renaissance of leg locks where, you know, mm -hmm. a, besides Dean Lister, there really weren't a lot of people doing it. And then all of a sudden you had all these guys getting really good with leg locks, right. And starting to use them in the mid 2000 teens. And then the writing was on the wall. You're either going to adapt or you're going to die. And so, you know, a lot of us adapted. We were like, okay, we got to work leg locks. The, right. the, it's here. We have to do this, right? This new grappling technology, so to speak, is here, and we're going to be left behind. Um, it's like having, a, it's like having, you know, the internet and the computers, and you know, yeah. still trying to use like a friggin' like a typewriter. It's like right. you, know, you could, you could, you could use it. It could work, but you could also use this machine that could be really well if you're open minded. So the and the reason why this is a problem is what happened 
during that renaissance was there were people like me that adapted, but there were a lot of people that did not. I've seen many black belts who basically were like, no, I'm not doing that. Leg locks don't work. They And they would insert whatever excuses they had for it. But then you'd see their students uh, do poorly. You'd see them do poorly at competitions. Um, and then they have to continuously build up excuses when they could have just simply been open-minded about the situation. And the reason why it becomes more difficult as you get better is because a lot of times when we get good at something, we come to know ourselves in a way that is pleasing, right? We say, oh man, like I I really like being this good at stuff. This is why it's hard for people to play with areas of jujitsu that they're bad at once they get kind of decent. In the beginning, when you suck and you get smashed everywhere, it's like whatever. But in the later on, in the later phases, when you're like a purple belt or brown belt, and you start getting submitted by blue belts because you're trying something new, sometimes that can be a blow to your ego if you're not careful. And so we come to know ourselves in a, a particular place. We come to know things in a particular place. And then so we don't want to change. We get complacent. And so the principle here is you have to be, be open to learning new stuff at all times. And you have to you have to be willing to avoid being sucked into the comfort zone, right? You need to do things that make you uncomfortable on some regular basis. You know, again, I'm not saying you have to go do crazy stuff, but you should be trying to push yourself in some way, shape or form. Um, This is how you make the growth happen. If you're, if you're hitting a jujitsu plateau, this is how you break those plateaus with new stuff. Um, And again, if you're running a business, this is how you make sure the business doesn't go stale and you can still continue to improve yourself and your ability to serve other people. And um, even in your relationships, right, you have to do different stuff. You have to um, continuously keep an open mind to things. I remember going back to the horse riding thing that originally started off as uh, I to be to be honest with you, I used to be terrified of horses. Like I remember the first time Jess got me on her horse, Smiley, um, who's not a big horse. He's like Mm -hmm. he's. It's a decent size, but he's not a big horse. And I was like looking at this horse. I'm like, oh my god, he's so big. I'm so scared about it, right? And I get on the horse, and I'm just I don't like this whole situation. And then when we were riding horses in Costa Rica, I didn't like it. I was just grumping about it. And then, um, you know, but it became this thing where I thought, well, maybe this could be something that we could do together. Um, and then I came around to the idea. It's been a lot of fun, right? But um, initially, I was very closed off to it. Now I'm, you know, a little became a little bit more open to it, and we're enjoying it together. And so, um, it's just an idea. To yeah, I, I think we get in, we get in these, uh, we get comfortable with, with success or the type of success we we work towards, and it's like sometimes starting over, but knowing that you know that continuous art of learning is going to make you better at jujitsu. I mean, you think of if you learn, it's almost like learning how to learn again or utilizing kind of um, ways of 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 learning. I think it just helps well, you typically. Well, if you if you know how to learn something, you typically learn things faster afterwards. You yeah, know, because you understand what's involved. Well, I think with jujitsu, you know, I think we discussed that everyone kind of thinks they're going to be decent or or whatever, and they suck. And even if you have a wrestling background, you're still going to come in and you're going to get probably tapped a bunch. Mm-hmm. And but being okay with knowing that that's kind of par for the course that you're probably going to suck a little bit and trying something new or even a new position or new technique, but that looking at, you know, Hey, it's going to pay off in the end. And and it usually does because otherwise you're going to be, it's harder. The more you resist, the the harder it gets after a while. Like, especially like as a, as a jujitsu athlete, um, if you're a black belt, you have, you feel like you have all this, this, this black belt to uphold, you know, it's like, I can't get tapped by, by a white belt or whatever, blue belt, whatever it is. It, yeah. But man, I, it, it, it makes you less effective as a coach. Number one. So if you're a coach, you, you have to know leg locks, even if you don't, it's not part of your game. You have to know it. Right. Well, not just leg locks, anything like you need to be, exactly. yeah, you should be open to whatever is coming your way. Right. And there's always, you know, there, there's always new techniques, new variations. And, um, I think there's there's always been of at least learning or looking into it and seeing what it's all about. But but learning right. new skills for for us that that are so ingrained, like jujitsu, is kind of a part of our. I don't know. It's like we can we can just adapt it and almost like learn it so much more easily now that we've done it for so long. Um, I, I think that helps to kind of get to new things. I think you, you got to realize that you will get there. You'll get more efficient in, in learning some new new tasks but you have to push yourself well it's like you know the greg satter's guy we had on the podcast right he he has that controversial approach that like drilling techniques in a passive form in some way is just useless right um and i and again i disagree and when i say drilling this is something where um 
I don't mean I'm like a partner that's just like a limp noodle. Like you right. can start to give each other looks and have some movement involved. But again, someone who's not fully resisting, you know, his 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 ideas that it's useless and he's he gave us some resources to read. So I'm reading through those resources. You are awesome. because yeah, because I'm like okay, like I don't I because I disagree with him. I, I'm not saying that because I'm not saying that what his because there is there's diminishing returns with drilling, right? Um, and there's everything always has to be done live. That's where it really matters. Um, but I felt the benefit of drilling in some ways for my own self when I when I get ready for competition. So I'm like, yeah. I don't think that it's useless, but how can I disagree with you if you said, here's the resources that we have, I'll look through them. Let me see what they say. So, um, you know, cause I'm trying to keep an open mind. I don't want to say no, no, you're you're an idiot, and because I've been doing this, I don't want to say that because I don't know, I don't know your, I don't know your style and stuff, and yeah. you have these resources. I've never read these resources, so let me look through them, um, because again, I want to try to be again. I never want to just write things off because I want to be open minded, just like with the leg locks. Yes. I remember being, I remember being a white belt. This happened multiple times, where my coaches early on would say that this technique or this technique would be you just don't want to do these. Like for instance, guillotines. Back in the day, we were told guillotines were a low percentage technique. Because it was like you would only do it to MMA fighters who left their head out or the wrestlers. And then, you know, so I'm like, okay, I'll trust you guys. But then Marcelo comes along and he's doing this high elbow guillotine and choking out everybody. So you're, you, so you say to yourself, well, maybe it's not that it's, you know, a low percentage technique. Maybe just we just have to get better with it. Maybe we have to adapt things and change things. Or maybe just like most things, right? It's not a, yes or a no thing is it's like a sometimes it's a maybe it's somewhere in the middle right um maybe drilling is not a waste of time maybe it can be done better you know maybe there's a little bit of in between i don't know um but i like to keep an open mind with those things to try to explore those ideas first before i try to write things off because i uh, i had my mind changed numerous times right which i i, I tend to think is a good thing um yeah. But and be willing, uh, be willing to change your mind. Don't go into something thinking that you're never going to learn anything from it or you're never going to get any benefit from it because you, you'll be surprised. You might at least learn something like when we had Greg on the podcast. Yeah, we don't quite understand the extent of his teaching style yeah. or, or the teaching approach. And I think, yeah, it's good to kind of know. It's almost like knowing, um, you know, maybe that's not the strategy you want to go to. But why does somebody choose a different strategy? It's like Ben Franklin. Ben Franklin had a, like, he was sort of paraphrasing here. He said something that he chose as he got older to use indefinites um, when he was speaking. Because when he was younger, like, he was kind of like a hothead and he would, like, talk trash about people yeah. and write, like, like, net, like articles that were, like, you know, dragging people's character through the mud that kind of thing um and some different stuff happened and then he chose to go away from that as he got older he would speak more in indefinite so like let's say if he if he was like for instance with this drilling thing he'd be like well i believe it to be this way he didn't say it is this way he said i Correct. believe it to be this way right um you know or you know i have experienced this and i have had success with you know basically you leave the door open no matter what and i think that that's kind of um it's a better way to be because what happens so much, I mean, think about this in social media land, right? Where you see people, you see the comment section. It's a, it's an absolute mess because people are coming at each other instantly with this. This is the way it is. This is the way it isn't um, opposed to simply, you know, in uh, supposed to simply saying like, Hey, why do you think that way? Or, well, I experienced this and I believe it to be this way. Why do you experience it? Why do you think it's this? And even Socrates, right? The person that many thought was the smartest man in, in Greece at the time, right? Like the guy just asked people questions. You know, he, he he wasn't he never really had definitive statements. Right. He's literally just asking people questions to their logic to figure out why they think the way that they do. And a lot of times they couldn't support their arguments. Right. So um, I think there's uh, there's some magic to that, being able to, one, keep the door open and ask questions. And so when, when you see something new come about, like in jujitsu, right, you should be asking questions. What is this? Could this work for me? Whatever. And then likewise, if there's something that new that pops into your career or uh, pops into your life in some way, shape or form, right, like having that, that ability to be open minded to it and be willing to ask questions about it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Move, move it on to number three, which is big. So this is something. Um, this is something that I think is really important. I got this from my wrestling coach early on, uh, but this is something that's been really important. Like I started that I had this little accountability group that I started um, back in January of this year. 
Um, I call it the executor's challenge. I'm always talking about the idea of executor versus collector. And so yep. I gathered up uh, a group. We've got about I think around 80 people or so. And again, you know, we're going through this together. And this, and basically, the idea was to focus on one to three small actions that you could execute on a daily um, or almost daily basis, right? Uh, studies show you can't really focus on more than implementing one to three things max. Um, so like small things. And then, you know, one of the th first things that I started with was basically telling them to go into an information diet. Right. So this is like a big deal for me. Like I tell people all the time, if you're trying to focus on something and get better with it, you got to you got to go on a diet, man. You got to focus because if you're if your attention is pulled away from so many different angles, it's very hard to be deliberate and focused on what you're actually trying to get out of it. You know, I mean, I talked to one of the guys is actually on the camp with me this year um, here in Costa Rica, who was also in the, the group, the Executors Challenge group. And uh, he was talking and he was saying, like, it's important for him because he finds like, you know, he gets up, he's reading the Bible, he's doing that stuff. And then he he reads some self-development stuff. And then he's you know looking through Instagram later on in the day and, you know, cool techniques everywhere, been bombarded with stuff the whole time. Yeah. And by the end of the day, his mind scrambled. Right. And so something that's important is to go on that diet. And so here's the idea. With that said, I'm sort of on a tangent there. Imagine that, me on a tangent. Early on, my coach, I remember him sharing an idea in, in high school wrestling, which you guys, I'm sure, have heard before, which was basically he told us it was like one of the first days we were in the gym uh, on the mat room. He said, listen, guys, you don't have to be good with much. All you got to be able to do is do three moves, a takedown, a pinning combination, and an, an escape or reversal. That's how you win high school wrestling matches. You do those three things better than anybody can stop and win matches. So really, it wasn't about learning everything. It was, uh, I just need to get good with a few things. And when I got, got into jiu-jitsu, that was what I was doing. I was essentially in jiu-jitsu looking for my, air quotes, three things, right? More than three things, but essentially just my good stuff. When you look at Hodger Gracie, you know, again, the guy's he's, he's on record as saying like he basically can count on his fingers how many techniques he's mastered. One of the best guys ever. When you look at guys like Marcelo Garcia, when I first saw, Mar saw Marcelo Garcia competing 2003, 2004, 2005, uh, both in person and in matches, he was just arm dragging everybody, doing the same damn thing over and over again. And so the idea is that it's better to be effective with less than no more and be ineffective. Right. So, again, you can know a lot of stuff. But it doesn't really make that much of a difference if you're not effective with it, if you haven't put the time to focus on and got those reps in and that practice with it. Um, a great example was early on as a blue belt, white and blue belt, both. One of our training partners that was at the gym, this guy basically was a walking encyclopedia of techniques I'd never heard before. He just knew so much random stuff. I thought it was so crazy. And I always felt kind of stupid around him because I'm thinking, man, this guy knows everything. And, and me, like my dumb ass can do barely do a, a front roll properly. But yep. I was able to a lot of times beat him during rolling because I had a few things I was good with. And that was it. Right now, that has its own problems down the road. Right. If we never expand. So that has its own problems. But when we're talking about, you know, getting better at something and really trying to improve, which a lot of us are, you need focus. Right. And you need to be become better with less things. So you're always expanding that out by trying new stuff. But you have to understand you're not going to be good with everything and you have to consolidate. Um, off the mats, that's been really useful to me because, again, we live in a world of endless possibilities. And if you become a entrepreneur, I hate that word, um, but if you become a business owner, entrepreneur, you start doing stuff on your own. It gets so rough because one of the things that we actually face, which is really difficult, is you can do everything. Yeah. Like that's that's a problem, right? When you feel like you can literally do everything, just like a lot of you guys, I'm sure, because I know we do have some business owners here. It's like being in jujitsu in the beginning all over again, where you're basically surrounded by opportunity and you can literally do just about it, anything, everything. And it's like, where do you focus on? And so, again, with that, you know, when I got into business full time in 2010, it was like, OK, well, what are the things that I need to do on a regular basis? Just like jujitsu, what are going to be my what are going to be my three things, my three moves when it comes to business? Right. And again, you don't know what those are at first. You have to find them just like you got to find your best jujitsu techniques. And uh, but, but then once you find them and you start to figure things out a little bit, you double down and you double, you keep going into them. Right. So yeah. obviously things like videos, I do videos a lot because it seems to be something I have a knack for. Um, I teach classes. I have to teach classes. Um, yeah, I know a lot of my friends who are who have gyms and they have like a whole staff and they don't really teach much. I've got to be in the mats. I have to be there. It's something I need to do, uh, both for my own sake and for the gym's sake. Um, but there's a lot of different things that I do for the gym and for the business that are specifically tied to these are my things. These are my best moves. 
Um, and I could do a lot of other stuff, but I would be less effective with it. And a lot of times what, what we're doing as business owners, right, is we're trying to um, hand off our things and to delegate to other people. And then even with relationship stuff, right, like there's things with like me and my wife, right? We, we, like, we've had conversations about this. I'm going to do this because you suck at this and vice versa. Right. So like, basically like, why are we both doing something where I would just, I'll, I'll just do this one by myself. You go do this because I suck at that. You suck at this. And then I, you know, vice versa. So we have somewhat, uh, we have roles, right? We have roles that we have to do. There's things that we do that, um, we do better than each other and we play in those roles. So, um, instead of me being trying to do everything and being ineffective with some of it, I focus on the things that I'm best with. She focuses the things that she's best with. And that seems to help our relationship run along fairly smoothly. Yeah. It, it takes time to, uh, like you had alluded to, like, it can be a problem if you only do a certain set of things as well. You don't want to also pigeonhole yourself. I think the one difficulty for me and even probably a lot of people is fear of, like you said, the fear of missing out. You know, if I don't say yes to this opportunity, if I don't mm. say, oh, if I don't, this technique looks like, oh, You're missing out. Yeah. I'm going to miss out on this technique. I'm going to miss out on some submissions or whatever. Um, I think when you really get good at, at what, those things that you're good at, I think you realize you can kind of, I think, pick, be more selective on other things. You're going to know if it works for you or not. Um, but I think you have to build your base and your foundation, whether it's in jujitsu or whether it's in business, you've got to get your, the things that figure out what you do well and what you don't do well also. And um, delegating is, is a hard thing, obviously, but there's certain things too. You do great. And then uh, certain things, Joe, uh, Ed co-owner of the, of the, uh, the gym that does really, really well. And I think like, it's just being, knowing what you do well and what you don't do well, I think is also very, very advantageous long-term. Well, and there's something that maybe people should think about too. The idea that like usual, like good principles are generally are a bit of a dichotomy and sometimes they're like, they contradict each other. So for instance, like the, the, we just brought up two things that seem to contradict each other, right? It's better they to do, be effective because yeah. we just said it's better to be effective with less things. But then at the same time, just a minute, so we have to be open to learning new things, right? Um, it's kind of like half guard. Half guard is one of the best passing positions in jiu-jitsu. It's also a fantastic sweeping position, right? Yeah. It just depends on what's going on, right? Like there's there's never like it's always this. It's usually the, the best principles. Typically, it's like, well, depends on like in for half guard, for instance. If the bottom person's like if his if the bottom person's back is pinned, it becomes a great passing position. If the bottom person is able to get onto their side and has an underhook and a leg hook on the side, it becomes a very tough position to pass and it becomes right. a great position for them to sweep, right? There's conditions to it. And so again, obviously these things they're different, but um when you're talking about when you're looking in the grand scheme and you're really dialing into like getting becoming more effective with whatever it is that you're trying to do again you 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 expand and you it's almost like you think about day and night cycles um or even br you breathe in you breathe out right you expand you contract it gets warm it gets cold so with your training right and with your we'll say training you try new things you experiment and then you consolidate what's working right it's like throw it's like being in the um in the river and you're you're putting out the the little sifter you're like a coal miner and you're yeah. trying to sift through and see if you can find the gold nuggets right that's what yep. you're doing and yep. so it has this natural ebb and flow to it. I just want to bring light to that because some of you guys might be watching. Like you just said, don't do this. But now you're saying do this again. It depends. It, it then, really uh, does. And I, I think it's all, it's all about balance. You got to have balance uh, or some perception of balance. Balance is a thing we've talked about as well. Like That's alignment. kind of, but yeah, alignment. You think is a better, uh, well, I, I, so my, my thing about balance is when we say the word balance, we think we're supposed to be like, like, you know, 20% here. It's 20 constantly here. in flux. That's what, right. you know, think of like somebody standing on a tightrope. They're like constantly moving their arms side to side, right? Or, or the little stick side to side. They're constantly moving. They're constantly shifting from, from one direction to the next. That's the way you achieve right. quote unquote balance. It's not really right. standing super still the whole time. It's wobbly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, that's why I like alignment because when we're talking about like working towards something, it's like, you know, if we align ourselves towards it, then basically we're always shifting our alignment. We are shifting our balance, but I think with like all the sort of new age self-development stuff, people talk about balance like there's this harmonious balance, right? Um, like you said, it's very wobbly, 
you're all over yeah. the place. And it really depends on what's going on. And so your balance yeah. is always shifting. And so you can use a, a shifting balance, a, an alignment that changes depending on what's important to you at that given point. It all right. depends. Yeah. Um, the next one, guys, you know, super important. This is like uh, the stoic side of me. Again, most of you guys know I, I, I like stoicism. I find it very useful because it's very practical. Yeah. You know, a lot of philosophy, uh, philosophy is very, very heady. And you're talking about all these grand ideas, whatever. Stoicism is very like meat and potatoes, very simple. Um, yes. was, it, it, and that's what it was. That was that's what it was supposed to be. Like when you read Seneca, you read um, Epictetus, you read uh, Masonius Rufus, you listen, you read these guys. This was the whole focus was, you know, a very simple. I don't want to say simple, but a very thoughtful approach. And the whole thing was it wasn't just philosophy to have grand ideas. It was a philosophy for life. One of the big ideas that they share um, in that, which I think you you find a lot of ch a lot of chances to practice this with on the mat, is that your perception is going to shape shape everything. How you perceive the things that are happening to you is going to perceive how they affect you, right? Yeah. So, like when you're on the mat, obviously you can lose a tournament and it can be terrible and it sucks. It, it does. You could look at it also and, and see like what could I do better. Um, when you're on a day to day role, right? You could look at it and say, okay, what 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 happened that was good. What happened that was not so good for me, right? As far as like my game and maybe me getting smashed. What could I do differently? You know, you could do these things. Um, you can you can perceive it to be a certain way, right? Um, everything can be done that way. I remember, um, shit, what was it? Um, I've talked about this story a few times, being um, almost like a, dealing with insomnia a couple of years ago. Literally, like some nights I just couldn't sleep for for the, the life of me. I don't know what was going on. I think it had something to do with my nervous system being a little out of whack and not uh, not taking enough time to chill out and let my body relax. But it is what it is. And there would be nights where I would take NyQuil and try to go to sleep, like which NyQuil usually will put me on my butt. Um, I would do all kinds of stuff. And I would be wide awake at five in the morning. Like it, it, terrible. Go, you have to go the next day to teach class, do all the busy stuff I do with with no sleep. But I remember one night, like one thing that really helped out was, and this is like, it's so weird, but it, was, it made a big difference. I was struggling with it one night and I was like, thought about it. I was like, well, you know, a lot of my, uh, a lot of my job is to basically share useful ideas with people. So I'm like, I'm going to figure this out at some point. And when I do, I'll have a lot, I'll have some really useful information for some people that may be experiencing the same thing. Yeah. And I was like, all right, so let's bring it on. Like, I was like, I'll deal with it and I'll get better and I'll be better for it. Right. And, uh, Small shift, small idea, but I remember then it was like an hour later I was asleep because I, I wasn't worried about it. I was like, you know what, it sucks. Let's deal with it. Let's bring it on, right? And I think sometimes if you can sort of catch yourself in the moment, maybe this is why meditation can be so useful. If you can catch yourself in the moment of it and, you know, when you're dealing with, I mean, it's very easy a lot of times if things are going well. It's when things are going in the, the rougher side of things that we struggle. But when you're going through those struggles, if you can sometimes perceive it to be a good thing. So just like when you're getting smashed on the mat, you know, this is making you better. It may not be fun, but you know, down the road, it's going to be a good thing. And I know that for me, like a lot of my best jujitsu came from me, like having the most unfortunate circumstances. Yes. I got smashed, got beat, got crushed, got submitted, whatever. And then I learned from them and got better for it. So then, you know, you learn to take that perception towards other things off the mats as well, where you learn to sort of, instead of perceiving them as to be this terrible awful thing that's you know falling on you you know bring it on i'll deal with it it's uh, it's a chance to grow yeah and, and some of it's kind of accepting the you know accepting the situation you're in you know if you're getting smashed like all right i'm inside control getting smashed i have to kind of just chill and take it and then when i have an opportunity i'm going to try to get out of it and then eventually realize okay why did i get in the situation or you know next time maybe i can avoid it or, or try to minimize the risk of it um, the other thing about perception um, in life, I think when you're dealing with something difficult, I try to zoom out. I always try to like, cause you get so into the moment, into the situation you're in or into the, you know, the bad experience. I try to pause and kind of like, just like zoom out, pretend like I'm, I see myself, but like I'm looking, I'm like sitting far away watching myself and seeing like in the grand scheme of things, how does it impact my life or, um, you know, my well-being i guess in some ways and, and sometimes it's a serious thing but i think you talked about with your sleep is accepting all right well this is this is going to be something i'm going to probably have to work work through and I, I accept that and i accept the challenge in some ways and um I'll, I'll get past it 
and then eventually I'll have some ideas on, on mm. how to how to you know really learn from it and then even help others you know overcome or get through it when they do deal with it so um you know if it's jujitsu and we're getting smashed or you lose a tournament in the grand scheme of things just a tournament you know you're still okay like you like to say my wife's still gonna love me you know my friends are still gonna be there i'm still gonna be the you know the same person i am uh it's not the most fun but usually you gain you gain something valuable through that experience right and, and the thing is is a lot of times the things that we experience most of the time aren't good or bad right like they just happen you know for instance i mean it, it, some of this stuff sucks it's not enjoyable like if you have a family member die that sucks yeah. it's not good or bad it just happened right if you're like i my mother died of cancer in 2011 it wasn't a bad thing it wasn't like an evil thing it just was a thing it just happened yeah. and death happens to everybody and it just sucks when it does and so again if you can detach the sort of the personal ownership or attachment to it where it's you know if you're looking at something and something happens to you and instead of getting wrapped up into oh how terrible this is whatever it's just it's just a happening it's just a thing that's happening you know and, and what can you do with it really that's what it comes down to yeah. so the last one guys and this is uh this one's a, i think this one's really important for people because we have this idea because this was useful to me we have this idea that some everybody needs this sort of extraordinary amount of discipline to be successful, right? And I have a idea that maybe wouldn't be too popular with some, but I don't think very many black belts, most black belts require much discipline to train, right? I think that they are, however they're wired, they like training jujitsu. It doesn't take much for them. I know for me, it took very little discipline to get my jujitsu black belt. Like it just didn't take that much. I, I enjoy, like, as far as the training goes, Right. I enjoy training. Very easy. I've just seen so many coaches lecture. Oh, my friend, you need to be at the gym every day, train hard, da, 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 whatever, because you have to have discipline. But I'm like, it didn't take me discipline to train. It was it required discipline sometimes to avoid going to parties and drinking or eating the wrong foods yeah. or, you know, doing other things. Or maybe, you know, when I was trying to do this stuff full time, the training part was easy. The hard part was not going and getting a job that made more money, but it would interfere with my schedule because I wanted nice stuff like other people did because I was living, sleeping on an air mattress yeah. um, in my mom's house, right? Again, those required discipline. The training did not. And I share this with people because, again, as I get older, I'm lucky enough to have a lot of things that I do that don't really require much discipline. Um, I enjoy doing them. So, therefore, it doesn't require some sort of, you know, Herculean effort for me to have to go do them. When I make a video, I like making videos. Um, I talked to a YouTuber once that's in the jujitsu space. And I remember he was telling me, he's like, I'm just so burned out with doing this, you know? And he's like, right, do you get burned out? I'm like, no, I like this. This is fun for me. I get to like share ideas and help people out. And like, it's like, then they talk to me five years later when they're a black belt and they say, thank you. You know, like, again, I, this is a beautiful thing to do. Teaching wise, someone was saying the other day, like, oh man, how do you keep the passion alive for teaching? I'm like, what, what are you talking about? Like training's amazing. It's like there it's tough some days and we all get a little tired and stuff, but I mean, what else would I do? You know, like, I mean, I've worked at a corporate job. I've sat in a cubicle before I've done things I didn't want to do. Like I can think about that for five seconds and I'm like, this is amazing. Um, but I think we're with everybody. I'm not saying that it, I still have to do things I don't like, and I still have to do things that do require discipline. I'm not saying that, but my thing is I see a lot of people who, for instance, say, God, I'm just, I'm struggling to train and, you know, whatever. I'm like, well, then maybe you should find something else to do. Like if, if you don't like doing it, let's find, like find something else that gets you going. Um, for instance, my wife, she does not like going to certain, like certain, she doesn't like certain types of working out, but like she'll go out and like, she got uh, the, like out riding the horses, whatever. She'll get out in the barn and like throw bait, bales of hay around for like a whole damn day with super strenuous stuff. Right. So yep. she can do that stuff all day long. So again, finding stuff that you enjoy doing is important. Um, we only get one one time to kick it around on this rock, right? So you you might as well find things that you enjoy. Sure, you'll need discipline occasionally and at times, but at the same time, something if you're looking at it, it shouldn't require some massive amount of discipline just to do things for it. And again, I started doing this with jujitsu and wrestling. I just love doing it. And then like you can just basically take this over to anything else. Like when I'm on a diet. I'll just eat foods that I like and I'll eat the right amounts of them. I won't change my foods to other foods that I don't like that I'm going to struggle to be consistent with. I will find foods I like and just eat those. 
you know, I granted, I don't have a bad diet anyway, but you know, you, there's good foods you can find that you enjoy tasting um, with the business work. I try to, again, this is something you work towards because you don't get to just do this in the beginning, but, you know, work towards doing just the things that I like and then have the things that I don't like offloaded to someone else who is either better at them or likes them, right? Like video editing. I don't necessarily like video editing, but I know people that love it and they're good at it. Here yeah. you go. I'll let you do it, right? Again, finding that so this way you can focus on the things that you actually enjoy doing so this way you can be better at them, right? So yeah. um, something from jiu-jitsu that obviously I got that were basically something I sort of live by off the mats as well. Yeah, I agree. I think when you when we talked about this topic, I, I just uh, – doing things that require less discipline, if you're constantly doing something that requires a lot of focus and discipline, doing something that's a little more leisurely, you know, like for example – uh, I like playing video games to, to decompress. So sometimes doing that will allow my brain to kind of relax a little bit because it's just kind of a something that doesn't require a lot of discipline. It's pretty yep. easy. And then I can go and do things maybe that are a little bit more uh, requiring of discipline and more effort. So I think even like you're you're talking about, which I agree with, but the other way to think about it is if you're like, oh, I'm constantly grinding and doing all this stuff and more get worn out, do things that you enjoy that may require a little less discipline. Um you know, some some parts of jujitsu, maybe maybe people don't like, you know, maybe drilling. They love rolling. But, I, you know, maybe do a little more rolling, incorporate more of that into your in your training, whatever kind of keeps you um, gives you that that healthy direction. I don't want to say balance again, uh, mm. but um, yeah, like so. So things are I, I understand that, too. And I think uh, Chewy make a great point. Like jujitsu, I think jujitsu is something that everyone can do, but is not for everyone. Mm. Um, uh, you know, everyone can, most people, even with like various physical you have the capacity. Uh, ailments, they, they can do some form of jujitsu, but it's not for everybody. So like, if you don't love it and find something you do love doing that maybe, maybe you love lifting weights, maybe that's what you love to do, but mm -hmm. do something that ultimately is going to make you feel good, give you some health benefits, you know, in that capacity. So, um, yeah. I mean, discipline is important, but I think if you're constantly doing something that requires a ton of that discipline, it's going to kind of wear on you and you have to have ebbs and flows to, um, to, to keep you almost a little bit more, um, kind of more energized. Mm -hmm. yep. Agreed. Um, and you know, something to sort of think about too, is if you're in a situation like jujitsu, well, then there's lots of things you can focus on. So you can focus on like your guard pass. I mean, if that's not working, you're not enjoying that. You can focus on submissions. Okay. And then like, all right, you're, you're in, you're like with work, right? Well, I can go focus on doing another video. I'm not feeling that today. Well, I'm going to go focus on, um, you know, some stuff for the class structure for the, the gym, right? Like you can give you, you can basically work towards assembling a lot of different things where you can just bounce around between them and you can just have things that you enjoy doing. And if something you get burned out on one, just move to the next thing. Um, yeah. Again, not everybody has that ability in all areas of their life. I know I don't either, but you try to do it for as many as you can. So this way, for the areas where you need the discipline, like 100%, you got lots of it you saved it. up. Yeah. Opposed to using it for everything that you do and you're just exhausting yourself and you're mentally fried. And um, then when it comes time to do those mentally taxing tasks or the tasks that do require the discipline that you're going to need, you don't have any left, right? So That's right. Um, anyway, guys, just some ideas that you want. Hopefully you enjoyed the podcast. Hopefully you got something from it. Um, again, if you guys like this one, I know it's a little different. Let us know. Shoot us a message. Um, but again, thank you guys for being here as always. Um, if you guys want to check out our sponsors, check out charlesweb.com. Again, for any of you guys that are, I kind of talked about the old man passing game a little bit. If any of you guys are getting a little bit older and you might understand the necessity of recovery, uh, there's a lot of different things, um, that are important for recovery. The biggest from, in my personal opinion is diet and sleep. Those are the biggies, right? You can't get around that. You have to get some good quality sleep and you have to fight for it. Because, uh, you know, the schedule and life and family will try to take it away from you. And then a good diet is really important. I was just talking to, um, again, one of the members of the group that I'm working with in January. And they were talking about how, you know, their diet's better. And they're training more because they they feel better, right? So imagine that. So, again, you'll have more energy if your diet's better. And then you recover better because you're getting the right foods. And then afterwards, that's when you can start playing around with supplements. And there's a lot of different supplements you can try. I personally, I like CBD. I think it's a great recovery supplement. You can, again, check out charlesweb.com. Promo code is jujitsu30 for 30% off the order. Um, some other stuff that I like, I like having some sort of magnesium supplement. 
Um, there's different forms of it. You can kind of look up and see kind of which form you like. Um, I like taking a magnesium supplement. I think that it tends to help me out uh, as far as relaxing things. And from time to time, I'll add ashwagandha root into it. During periods of time where I feel like I'm super stressed out, the ashwagandha root seems to help out with uh, basically with like sort of stress. I think that's kind mm-hmm. of its uh, its claim to fame is that it's an adaptogen, right? So it kind of helps mm-hmm. out with uh, with dealing with stress. And so that's one of the supplements I take. But again, you can kind of do your research um, also with sleep. Um, if you guys haven't already done so, you should in your home because this is something I did when I've got uh, when I was dealing with the insomnia stuff. I besides making sure I had time to like wind down and develop a good sleep routine. I got a bunch of lamps for that uh, lamp, uh, red and yellow lamp bulbs. Mm-hmm. And so at nighttime, we we have like they're dimmer than like regular light, and you have them around the house, like red or red light and um, yellow light. I mean, you're not in like it's not like you're in some weird room. Like they're not yeah. like uh, you're not in like one of those rooms where they were processing the pictures or something like that. But it gives it a different tint, and um, that seems to help out. I seem to fall asleep better there than if I had like a big bright LED white light going. Um, and so supplements, hot shower, that seems to help. And again, I like the Charles Webb stuff that you can check out at the website. Also, guys, check out epicworldbgj.com. If you guys have never been on their website, they have a great selection of T-shirts, rash guards, shorts. They've got, what, what, I'm, I've got one with me, uh, the, the fanny pack. I got the fanny pack with oh, me yeah. down here in Costa Rica. Useful. They've got all kinds of cool stuff. Um, and again, Matt, he's a great guy, runs a, um, a solid, uh, solid company there. A lot of great products, great customer service. And again, if you go on their website, if you find anything you like, use the promo code jujitsu 20 for 20% off the order. And again, that'll support the podcast. You get to support a jujitsu brand that's made by a black belt who's supporting people like, you know, you guys out there and supporting a lot of competitors these days. He's sponsoring a lot of competitors. Yeah. Um, and you can check it out at epicrollbj.com. And guys, if you want to support the podcast directly, you can go over to patreon.com slash the jiu-jitsu podcast. You'll get access to an exclusive library that we have of content with uh, extra podcast episodes that aren't released. We have some clips of videos and rolling and things of th- that nature, uh, some clips with our previous guests that we've had on the podcast. And again, some other things like warm-up routines. It's, just, it's a collection of stuff that we've been accruing over the last few years. You get access to it for an inexpensive price. And then again, if you guys have questions inside that, that you would like answered either in a a podcast extra that we release exclusively to the Patreon, or if you would like to have it for a future uh, future podcast episode, you can send it through the Patreon, and you'll also get an ad-free version of this podcast if you don't like listening to these ads. Um, so check it out at patreon.com slash the jiu-jitsu podcast. And uh, guys, last but not least, if you would like to join my daily email uh, newsletter, my Chew Crew list, you can do so by going to my website at chujitsu.net slash join. When you join, you get access to a couple of free eBooks. And then afterwards, you will then get my daily email that goes into everything from philosophical ramblings and ideas that I'm chewing on, uh, as well as exclusive offers that I only send to the email list. And then on top of that, you get what you would expect, jiu-jitsu training tips, um, ideas for um, improving your jiu-jitsu on and off the mats, and uh, some different stuff like that, guys. So again, if you want to check it out, jujitsu.net slash join uh, to join up today. Um, so again, guys, appreciate you guys for being here. I'm going to go uh, and enjoy Costa Rica. And uh Maybe one of you guys that's listening to this will join me coming up in um, in May of 2024. It's awesome. I went last year. It was a lot of fun. So you should go. Lots of training, lots of beautiful weather, lots of good food. That's right.